Wait, what? Charles, uh, what, what are you doing? I'm driving. Charles, we're doing a video on your wife's car. This. Not this. This is later. Okay. Sorry, buddy. Like, we can't do both in the same video. Really? Uh, fuck. We only have so much time. <laughs> so, th this one today. That one next time. Okay. Next time, I promise. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Parking Lot Finds. I'm here with my friends Charles and Ann, and I, they have a really cool story behind this C4 that I'm really excited for them to share with you. Yeah. Our story starts in September of 2015 when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I then uh, proceeded to go through my treatment and was given a clean bill of health. But then in 2017, we found out the cancer had spread, uh, it had spread, it was now stage four, and obviously that was a shock. Um, so in processing that, I came to the conclusion that since we didn't know how much time I would have left, we needed to do the things that we had always talked about doing, the things that we, our, our bucket list, our dreams. And so I told my husband, Charles, that he needed to buy his dream car. And so with that, I had the freedom to go looking for cars. There's a handful of cars that I've wanted for years. Um, I'd love to have a Porsche. I still haven't bought one of those because I just haven't. Um, years ago when I was working at a shop, a guy came in with um, an 80, 83 Alfa Romeo Spider, and um, he needed some work done to it, and I fell in love with it, and the guy let me drive it, and he and I had a great conversation, and so I thought it'd be fun to have a two-seater convertible, um, and so I started looking at Alfa Romeos and realized that, one, they're starting to get old, and two, they're starting to get expensive, and so if I'm going to spend that much money on something, I wanted something nice and reliable, so by the grace of God, we found this car. Uh, we got a good deal on it because it needed a little bit of work here and there. And so we've done a few things to it. And so it's just been a blessing to have. Um, it's a 2003 with the big motor and so and the six-speed manual. And so it is quite strong. It is quite fun. And we've enjoyed it a whole lot. Um, On the days that Ann felt bad, we would just go out and get a coffee and drive. Where did you drive? Wherever we wanted. Um, mostly down the back roads because they were peaceful and the interstate's loud and wild and we just needed to relax and, and, and let Ann get out of the house and just um, and just relax. And so... We put some miles on it over the years, and so it's been a tremendous blessing uh, just to have it, and we've we've really enjoyed it. So, yeah, we do have an interesting story about it, though. Um, like I said, we got a good deal on it, and so any good car guy who knows what he needs to do to his car is goes and looks for parts, and he's also got a bucket list for things he'd like to have. But one thing you do is you just go looking for what's out there. And um, again, by the grace of God, a place called um, Redline Automotive in um, Orlando, Florida. Give a shout out to those guys because they're really nice to us. They had off of a wreck, a hard top in Maldives blue, which is what this is. And so they're rare. They don't have any more of them. They're like a Ming vase, if you will. So what's out there is what's out there. And if you break it, it's gone. And so they were unwilling to ship it anywhere in the country. And so I had a half dozen conversations with them via email and via phone. They made me a deal on it. Um, so Ann and I took a weekend and went to Orlando. We drove down one day with the top down in the breeze, spent the night in Orlando, woke up early the next morning. I drove over there and met the guys. We put the top, we put the top on and, um, we left Orlando with the car in this configuration. So that was really cool. <laughs> so do you guys like it better as the hardtop? 
Actually, it depends. Um, it looks better as hardtop. Honestly, to me, I think it looks better. <laughs> Your opinion. <You're> right. <laughs> but <laughs> the, lines, the lines flow a lot better to me with the hardtop on it. Um, but so, we like it better with the, with the soft top. We, we put the hard top on for the winter yeah, and then take the, take the hard top off. So we have the soft top in the summer so that we can put that down and drive it as a convertible. Especially living here in North Carolina, it's gets, it, yeah. convertibles are great. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, oh, yeah. yeah. And seeing that it's the spring and the top needs to come off. Hey, I can help you. <laughs> I'm here. I, I'm willing to help. That's what car friends are for. Yeah. <laughs> So, Ann, what is this car really meant for you, though? Is on those hard days, what is this meant for you to be able to just get in something and go someplace? Yeah. Well, when Charles, I, I was actually uh, visiting some friends in Alabama when he found it, and he texted me some pictures. And when he when he talked about getting it, he said that he could envision me going for a drive or driving it to my doctor's appointments um, or going for a drive if I was having a bad day. And I thought that's more his thing than mine. <laughs> um, however, I love driving this car. Um, I did learn how to drive a manual when I was in high school, so I can drive the six speed and it's just fun to drive. So on those days when I, when I did go to drive it to doctor's appointments or just go for a drive on my own, it was just, it was fun and relaxing. And, um, it just gave me a little, a break from the mental fog, hmm. the, the fog that I lived in. Um, and it just brought me some joy. Um, just living every day with going through treatment again. Um, feeling the 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 fatigue the pain levels sometimes i was in a lot of pain um it just kind of gave me a little break from that and um the times when we would we would go for a drive together um it was just peaceful um we'd put music on and i would just i could i don't know it was peaceful and relaxing in a way that I couldn't get here at home. That, that's that's understandable. Yeah. Because a lot of people, they don't when they're going through a hard season, they don't. It's hard to find joy, especially with mm -hmm. what your guys are going through. It's it's hard to find joy in those seasons. So finding something like this that you both can enjoy and just be able to shut the world off for a little while. That's why. Charles and I love this hobby so much. Yeah. It's one of the most frustrating <laughs> hobbies is being a car guy. But when you get to just go, like I was, like Ann and I were talking earlier about when my wife and I are having a bad day, our favorite thing is just go for a car drive. Just, hey, throw the kids in the Jeep, throw them in the minivan. It doesn't even matter. Just, just go listen to music and just shut the world off for a while. Mm -hmm. And that's important no matter what you're going through, especially said with something like you guys are going through. The thing is, it's her car. It was going to be mine, and I bought it for me. I don't understand God. I don't understand why he tells us to do stuff. Um, what I do know is one of the most important things you can do as a Christian is be obedient. Um, and that looks strange sometimes. It really does. It's, it really does. Why are you, what? <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense to the outside world. Like, you're doing what? Yeah. It's like I'm being obedient to what God's telling me because he's the one that matters. Yeah, exactly. And so, well, that doesn't make any sense a lot of times um, on, a, on, a, on some levels to some people. But um, we got this home, and I was very proud of it and still very proud of it, very thankful for it. Um, um, and so I was praying like I do one day. And I really felt like God was saying, give this, you know, give this to Ann. And so my conversations with God are not <laughs> real great, if you will, sometimes. <laughs> and so I questioned God about that one. Like, what do you mean? I've just bought the car that I've been searching for for months. Um, 
for me. And again, I just got this impression from God. He's like, you know, give this to Ann. And so this is Ann's car. It's not mine. It's hers. So um, I don't have my car as, as, as you know, which was the assignment several years ago. We haven't bought me the car that I, that I want yet. We did, but I gave it to Ann. But, um, so um, one of my bucket list cars is, is a Porsche. And so we may or may not do that. We'll just depend. You just got to pray about it and see what God says and be wise and, and be obedient. So yeah, you never so, know a door's yeah. going to open or what car's going to drop in your lap because it's not like you have a friend that's constantly on marketplace looking yeah. for stuff and sending you stuff. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My buddy is just mar- my buddy that peruses marketplace all the time and makes videos may come across one. Yeah. Or all the cars and coffee, the people yeah. that you meet there might be like, hey, I know a guy that's got one that just has to get rid of it. Yeah. Actually, we do. See, it's, <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and Jody, John and the Heckler. Mm. John yeah, and Jody, John and Jody yeah. um, it, were moving back to West Virginia. Like, that's where they were from years ago. And their driver, the one who's going to drive their, um, U-Haul truck mm. had some family emergency come up, yeah. and John can't drive because he has epilepsy. Yeah. So he keeps oh, yeah. Either, so. Um, anyway, so they were like looking for, looking for, um, help. Yeah. And um, so contacted us. Yeah. Contacted you. Somehow anyway, yeah. Right. And so <laughs> that weekend was our anniversary. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. so the kids were at my mom's, and we're like, but it's our anniversary. <laughs> So we drove, we, we decided we'd help him out. So um, he drove the U Haul. Yeah. And I drove this one up to West Virginia. Mm. So I'm driving oh through the gosh. mountains. Oh my gosh. This it would was, be, I especially through so Virginia. It's yeah, a freak out every time. There. I saw, I've, after 17 years, I'm like, just, just close your eyes. I'm ignoring every word you say right now. <laughs> we got to get to where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I had this, so much fun oh driving, gosh. following him up there. Um, and then we, we um well they paid for a hotel for us yeah. um and so we spent our anniversary in West Virginia yeah. um <laughs> but um yeah, that was like <laughs> but that was our first like first road trip yeah. with yeah, it. and this and car it, would be so much yeah. fun yeah. in the mountains yeah. yeah yeah it's interesting the world sounds different when you're convertible you're driving this home and yeah, we drove up there we drove over drove down whatever that German restaurant is, came over and missed a turn. So we kind of messed yeah. us up. But it's weird. You stand in your in the backyard and hear the bugs mm-hmm. and whatever. Well, they're everywhere. Yeah. And I didn't realize that until we had this car to drive around, this convertible. I'm driving, we're driving down the interstate at 70-something miles an hour, and I hear all the bugs. <laughs> Hearing all the bugs in the world. As we're driving past in the wind, it's like, wah, 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 yeah, wah, 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 wah. what on earth? Yeah. It just it's interesting. Yeah, it's it's a whole new world. Mm-hmm. So I love driving the doors off of my Jeep. Yeah, I'll leave the hard top on. You take the doors off. It's so much fun. Yeah. yeah. All right, Charles. So what yeah. is under the hood of this or bonnet? Since it's European, sorry. Oh, yeah, <laughs> bonnet. Uh, so this is the three liter inline six that BMW is so famous for. That's bulletproof and wonderful. Um, it's been a lot of fun. It's been reliable for us. And there's a six speed gearbox behind that, that my wife can drive. That just makes it so much more fun. Oh yeah. This is a blast. She enjoys it a lot. So, cause this car, I mean, it'd still be fun with an automatic, but it, it, it's, it wouldn't be the same. No, it's not the same. No. This is, I don't remember the horsepower in it. It's two and change. Um, but this for a is car all this the, small uh, though. It's that's a lot. Yeah. Well, this is all the motor in a 328, but half the car. <laughs> oh <my> gosh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Parking Lot Finds. And because Charles is a good friend, I forgot my coffee at home. He made me espresso. That's how good of a friend he is. So, Charles, where can they find you? Well, obviously at your house well, yeah, or at work. But us, on the yeah. socials, how do they find you? Uh, we're Blue Chip Auto Works. Uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And it's, yeah, Blue Chip Auto Works. That's us. <laughs> oh, those of you guys might recognize him. Probably should have said this in the beginning. 
he's a guy that all my cars and cough videos that I'm always panning over to. It's this guy. Because at first it started as a joke, like the first one I did, he was there. And now every time we're at one, I make sure he's in it, whether he realizes it or not. So so you guys are wondering, who's that random guy in the background? It's Charles. So Charles, thank you guys for sharing your story about your car. Appreciate you guys. And until next time, guys, happy hunting. Oh, that is good. Oh, that is good. Yeah. That makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> Expresso makes everybody happy. <laughs>